Hey folks, Alan Mandic, Mandic Really here, and this is my Bamboo Labs X1 3D printer. I've done a couple of videos where I've modified it a little bit. I've fixed a couple of issues I had on the machine, but in this video, well, it's time to level up. In this video, I'm gonna show you a handful of mostly 3D printed modifications to this machine to make it even better. From accepting a wider range of filament spools, to easily swapping away from using the AMS, shining a little light on our prints, and even more. Let's check it out. So to fit bigger spools of filament in the AMS unit, we're gonna do the Hydra AMS upgrade. But there are a handful of other things I wanna do on the way to getting to that project. Let's just dive in and start working on this machine and I'll show you all the upgrades I'm gonna be making as we go. There'll also be timestamps in the description down below so you can jump around if you want. The first thing I'm gonna show you is actually a 3D printed tool for this machine to make it easier to remove the AMS from it. If you have a bamboo machine, you might know that removal of the AMS off of the top of it is surprisingly annoying. The clip on the connector for the wiring is on the backside between the case and the connector where it's hard to get to. This tool is designed to slip in between there and actuate the clip so you can remove the connector easily. Now the Teflon tube where it goes into the buffer is recessed in, so it's hard to get to the clip for it. I don't know what they were thinking when they put this whole setup together. The other end of this tool is designed to press into that recess so you can remove the tube easily. Okay, I'm not overstating, this is a genuine reaction. This tool, this is the very first time I ever used it, filming the process to show you folks. This is a must have for the X1 with an AMS. It made it so much easier to disconnect that connection, remove the Teflon tube. You have to have that. Now I can get this AMS out of the way. With the AMS out of the way, it's time to take the glass top off of here because I'm gonna be shining a little more light onto this situation. The inside of this machine is best described as a cave. It has a single light bar, but it's inadequate in my opinion. It does have a camera and you can film time lapses in the software, but they turn out really grainy and dark because of inadequate lighting. There is a stated reason as to why the lighting is the way it is. The LiDAR camera used for calibration can be overwhelmed by too much light inside of here and it won't be able to read the lines properly to calibrate. The thing about that is though, I moved to a PEX sheet from Wham Bam that I really like, which also messes with the auto calibration. And I also just don't auto calibrate anymore anyway. I manually calibrate this machine because I really found the auto calibration kind of inadequate. That's a totally different topic and might have to wait for my review of this machine or a separate testing video. Let me know if you'd like to hear more about that. There are a handful of designs out there to go about adding LEDs to this machine. Most of them are a little riser setup that goes on top and raises the glass up a little bit, uh, providing space to put a strip of LEDs in. That's what I'm going with. I found the design I liked and then I remixed it into a single piece design. It's obviously too large to fit on the X1 in this fashion, so I printed it on the Elegoo Neptune 3 Max using Greengate 3D Cool Gray PETG filament. This goes in place of where the glass did sit, raises the glass up, and then it has some TPU gaskets that I printed on the X1 to seal the glass onto the machine so you're not losing heat out the top of this thing, which is a concern for me. Now to actually light up the inside of here, I picked up some 5,000 Kelvin white LED light strips that run on 24 volts and I'm gonna power them with a King Rune power supply off of another printer. It's massively overkill for this project, but I had it so I didn't have to spend any money on it. This does mean I'm gonna end up flipping the power switch on this power supply when I wanna turn the lights on and off versus a more elegant approach of running something off of G-code commands from within the printer. I don't feel like sourcing 24 volts on it and worrying about overloading some power circuit in this machine, so I'm fine with this. The field of view on the camera in this thing is quite wide, so this upper corner in the back of this machine is actually visible on the camera. So I wanna make sure I'm not gonna put LEDs in that very corner so that they're not overexposing the camera itself while lighting up. On this riser, there's a pass-through for the cable on the left rear corner here. I'm gonna upload my remix of the single piece design if anybody wants to print it in two versions, one with a left-hand corner pass-through and one with a right-hand corner pass-through. This is working for my application. And I'm just gonna lay this out so I know how long of an LED strip I need here. And I'm gonna come through and probably hot glue this in place when I'm all said and done, because I don't trust the adhesive on the back of this to stick to the PETG very well or hold up under chamber temperature. 
as we move forward. I forgot to hit record as I was putting the LED strip in here, but it went smoother than I expected. The corners are a little difficult with this strip that I use because of that like diffusion that it has on it. I put hot glue in each of the corners and at the electrical connection so it's all sealed and hopefully will stay in place long term. Let's take a quick look at before and after. We are currently looking through the tinted glass door of this machine, but the interior stock LED light bar is on, and now our new lights are on. You can see the massive difference to how well lit the inside of this machine is. When we turn it back off, yeah, it's, it's a dungeon in there. Now it's really time for us to dig into this AMS and get the Hydra installed. The Hydra AMS is a 3D printed interior shell that replaces the existing shell of the Bamboo Labs automatic material system. The whole idea is that Bamboo Labs didn't maximize the interior space of the AMS. So larger diameter spools, wider spools, or smaller, say 500 gram spools, could not fit into the existing system. This new one maximizes that space and allows for fitment of those. Creator Hume Beam, I guess that's how you say it, designed these parts to be printed within the build volume of the X1 standing up. And I'm really impressed with the overall design and how printable it was. I did have one failure on my initial attempt, but that was a filament issue. After correcting it, I was able to successfully print these components without issue. I used Polymaker ASA for them. Not that I need the temperature handling capabilities of these materials. The AMS should not be getting that hot, but I just had it in a color that I like to fit the color scheme I wanted. We're gonna have to reuse the interior components of the AMS with these new shell parts. So let's get this thing disassembled. I'm not gonna do an in-depth walkthrough of how this is going. I'll call out any issues I might run into, but I'm basically just following the guide for disassembly of the AMS on Bamboo Labs' website as far as their maintenance is concerned. I haven't done any maintenance on my AMS to this point and I have a Kickstarter unit that I've run a lot of filament through so I'm assuming I'm probably gonna have to clean up quite a bit inside of here. While I'm working on this I want to take a quick moment to thank my patrons on Patreon. It is only thanks to you folks that any of this is possible. This job can be really time consuming, requires a lot of time and materials to produce these videos and your direct support really helps to make any of it happen. Thank you so much to each and every one of you who supports on Patreon, and if you're not already, please consider checking it out at the link in the description down below. I am making sure to label all the wiring for the individual motors and connections as I'm disconnecting them so I'll know where to put them back on when I reassemble all this stuff. Once I got the shell stripped down to just the base components of the AMS that I actually need, it's really pretty straightforward. Assembling the three parts of the Hydra into one is as simple as slipping together a couple of dovetail joints. It actually pretty firmly attaches together, but then a couple of M3 by 20 screws go in place to ensure that they are properly aligned and won't come apart. I made a point of inspecting my parts before I put them back into the Hydra because I was worried about any damage or wear since my unit is one of the older ones out there. And sure enough, I found an issue. What you're looking at is the Teflon tube from slot number one in my AMS. And it is so worn out that there is a hole in this thing. It is absolutely in need of replacement. And I'm glad I'm in here and going to do that. Now, in all fairness, I did run some PACF through the first slot of my AMS when I very first got it, the stuff that came with my X1. I maybe ran 100, 150 grams through that slot. That was before Bamboo told everybody, hey, don't run abrasive material through the AMS at all. It's before they learned that was a problem. But that doesn't really account for the wear I'm seeing here because slot number two also has a fairly decent amount of wear. So I'm gonna replace both of those Teflon tubes. Assembly of the bamboo parts onto the Hydra setup is very straightforward. Everything basically just goes back where it came off with the original tray. It's all honestly really well designed. Seriously, as a designer myself, having to work within the constraints that this was, you know, components being in exactly the same locations, fitting into a box in a specific way, and achieving a goal of increasing the size of spools that can fit in here, as well as decreasing with 500 gram spools. This design, bravo. This is excellent. I'm not gonna say it's perfect, but for the printability factor, for how well it all seems to fit together, granted I haven't put it into the case yet and run it yet, it seems really good at my initial impressions. Installation into the case for the Hydra AMS is very straightforward, same as the original came out. 
slip it in, two electrical connections at the back of the box, set it down into place, and then two screws hold it in. With the Hydra AMS installed, I could throw it back on the machine, but there's a couple more things I want to do yet in this video. I want to install one of these Ys next. This Y piece is such a simple yet ingenious design. What it does is allow you to bypass the AMS without having to disconnect or change anything. Currently, filament comes out of the AMS, it runs down into the buffer system, up through the Teflon tube, and then in through the back panel of the machine. If I want to run things like abrasive materials, you already saw what would happen if you were to run abrasives through the AMS, you're not supposed to do that. Or TPU, it's too soft, the AMS can't feed it properly. Then what you need to do is reach back here on the back side of the machine, disconnect this feed tube, and then feed the filament into there. It's not complicated, but it's an extra step to the process that makes it a little bit annoying. This is called the over-engineered Y-splitter design. It accepts a couple of these little collets that actually allow it to replace the push connect fittings on the back side of this machine so that the Teflon tubes will fit into it securely and be engaged like they should be. It also has a screw hole for an M3 by 20 screw to pass through it and securely hold it to the back side of the machine so everything is really locked in. This is a really nice design. It's nice and smooth so when you're not using the AMS the filament will be retracted out of that tube as it does at the end of every print and all you have to do is feed filament into the empty hole on the other side of the Y and boom you've bypassed the AMS without having to disconnect anything. That Y splitter is pretty easy to install. The next thing I want to do is really easy and it's something I wish I could have done in the first video that I did on the Bamboo X1 and that is insulate the glass top. I know for a fact this machine loses a lot of heat through this glass top. Heat rises, this glass is not that great of an insulator overall. So what I'm doing is putting this light and gasket assembly that I'm using for the riser on top of the machine glass that is and marking all the way around this thing so i know where i can put insulation now i didn't put it on here previously because there wasn't enough room in my opinion remember i put that riser on there for the leds that also gives me the added benefit of raising the glass up about 10 millimeters on this machine giving me room Previously, I was worried that if I put insulation on the underside of the glass, that the drag chain and the Teflon tube feeding the filament into the extruder assembly would rub on it, drag, and or just screw up. Now I can justify putting some of this insulation that I used inside of the machine in the first video on the underside of this glass, closer to the heat source so it should keep the heat trapped inside the machine better. I've got the foil with the asphalt back on the glass now, so that's one layer. But I'm gonna do the same thing I did in the rest of the machine where I applied this foil asphalt material and then I put this foam over top of it. It's something. I don't know how well it's going to work and maybe I'll end up changing this eventually, but for now, it's what I've got. With that foam insulation applied on top of the foil, I can install this on top of here. Now, I did take before temperatures when I was printing some parts for this build and I will take some after measurements before the end of this video as well so we can see if I improved my chamber temperatures this way. I'm also checking inside of here to make sure there is clearance above the top of the extruder assembly and the cable chain and that foam. I should be good to go. Now with that insulation done, I'm ready to put the AMS back on here. For all the things we gain with the Hydra system, being able to fit larger and smaller spools, we do lose one thing versus the original bamboo AMS, and that is the desiccant packs that sat in the bottom of the tray to dehumidify the inside of the box. We do have a solution for this though. These little screw-in doodads are going to fit inside of spools in the AMS and serve two functions. One, they're going to hold desiccant inside of them that I can put in there and help to dehumidify the inside of the chamber. The second function is a little less obvious though. When you get spools like this, where you've got little filament left on it, especially with these cardboard spools where they don't weigh a whole heck of a lot, the AMS, as the motor inside of it tugs on the filament, this filament can actually lift up off of the rollers inside of the system and start to bang off the inside of the case or cause feeding issues. So adding these in here with some desiccant inside of them will add a little bit of weight to the spool to help hold it down into the rollers. 
To fill those up, I'm gonna use some of this orange indicating desiccant that I got off of Amazon forever ago. It's called indicating because it will actually change colors when it becomes soaked with moisture, so you'll know that it is no longer able to do its job. You can also take this out, put it on, say, a tray, put it into an oven, a toaster oven, and dry it out and bake the moisture out of it so you can reuse it. I just need to carefully fill each one of these up so that they are pretty much full of desiccant to get the maximum amount of weight and drying capability. I've personally not found moisture inside of the AMS to be a big issue for me, but my studio is pretty well climate controlled, so that might be why. But this will allow me just another level of moisture reduction inside of the box while I'm printing. All right, I'm just about to put the bamboo and the whole AMS set up back where in the studio where it usually goes and run a test print to just do an overall and get some final numbers out of this thing. But I do want to make one quick note. The whole point of the Hydra AMS is to open up your range of filament options. This printed solid Jesse PLA that I have previously would not fit into the AMS. It would hit the backside of the case and just wouldn't fit in here at all. Now it does fit in and it will freely spin, but it sticks up a fair bit. So the lid will hit it still. I still need to either lift the lid and keep it up while this is printing or put a spacer underneath the lid so that it doesn't rub on the spool. This is a definite improvement and would allow me to use this Jesse PLA more in the future, but it's not 100% there just with the Hydra AMS alone. Also, you can now move the rollers at the back side of the AMS to four different positions. I have them all the way back to fit my polymaker spools that I print with almost all the time. But you can move them to some much further forward positions for 500 gram school spools like these cookie cat spools I have. The only problem with that, for me anyway, this cookie cat in particular, is these spools are bigger than other 500 gram spools. So again, they are so popped up there that they would hit the lid if I close it. So I'm gonna have to have the lid all the way up if I run these spools in the AMS. But I didn't have the option to run these at all before, lid or no lid. So that's opening up a world of possibilities for me. I'm gonna go ahead and move the machine back to where it's supposed to be in the studio. And I'm gonna start preheating the chamber. When I'm printing things like ASA, ABS, nylon, I will preheat the chamber and bake it to bring up the chamber temperature. I wanna see if when running a higher temperature print, I'm gonna run some ASA through there, my chamber temperature will increase since I added that insulation to that top glass. I'm curious what's gonna happen. But while that's going, I've got one more 3D printed upgrade for the Bamboo Labs machines, and it's not actually installed on the machine. It's a storage box for the extra components that go with it. This is a remix of a remix, but it's a fun little storage case with some inbuilt sections to hold components specifically for the Bamboo X1 or or P1P. I just printed this in PLA, did a multicolor on the lid with the X1 and the AMS, and it assembles with eight individual M3 by 20 screws. There's something interesting about that. The three things that I showed you in this video that happened to require extra hardware all required M3 by 20 screws specifically. It's not really important unless you want to do these as well. It's just coincidental that they required M3 by 20, and I thought it was interesting. After assembly and a little bit of organizing, I was able to get all of my stuff inside of this box. It's not exactly as organized as I would have liked. There's no home for the extruder motors specifically to sit. These bigger ones just don't fit them. I wish those would have had a home. But otherwise, my hot ends fit in there pretty nicely. I could put the AMS disconnect tool in here and even the spool holder that I don't use fits inside of the case. This print's been running for a little while now, so let's check out the temperature as it's going. The previous one, I seem to have lost the footage that I had of the chamber temp. That print was running for about two, three hours and was at 49 degrees Celsius. It's blurry, but you can see it in the corner of this image. This print that I have running right now is only a two hour long print. It's only about an hour into it and the chamber temperature is at 52 degrees Celsius. So I have seen now a three degree improvement just from insulating the top glass in this shorter length print. And an unintended side effect of insulating that top glass, previously the inside temperature of the AMS was a little over 100 degrees Fahrenheit during that longer print. Now it's only at 91 degrees Fahrenheit. So that's a 10 degree drop since that insulation on top of the glass is preventing the heat from getting up to the AMS. Now that I have that light in the chamber, I think it's highlighting the bigger issue here, that gap to the left-hand side of the door. For some reason, they just have a couple millimeter gap in between the panel and the door, obviously so the door can open. 
I swore I'd seen online where somebody sealed that up with something, either a printable design or they had a seal they liked for it, and I remember thinking, oh, I like that. But I couldn't find it again when I was making this video, so if you know what I'm talking about, please let me know in the comments. That thermometer is also a hygrometer, and it's showing that we dropped 8% of humidity inside of the AMS box with going to those new desiccant designs versus the Bamboo Lab desiccant packs that were in there. With those details down and this print complete, take a look at the time lapse. The lighting didn't necessarily do so much. Shocker, it can't really turn a not even 1920 by 1080 webcam into a professional camera. But I don't think it's gonna be very difficult for you folks to realize why I still dig the lighting in there. It'll be good for if I live stream with the feed from that camera and also just looking in there and inspecting anything. Some final thoughts on all the designs that I featured in this video, basically, they were all excellent. I'm gonna throw links in the description down below because kudos to all the designers. Everything I printed for this video printed well and fit exactly as it was intended to. Bravo, everybody. If you have a X1 or a P1P, you might wanna check out some of these designs. Again, links in the description down below. Now I gotta to get to work on filling that empty space on the shelf over there with a full printer build. I think it's gonna wrap it up for this one, folks. If you found this one interesting, maybe check out one of my previous videos of modifying the X1 and make sure to get subscribed to ensure your 3D prints don't fail. It's not a guarantee, but it can't hurt. See you, folks.